Hello, Scorpios. If you guys would like a private reading, as always, just send me an email. My email is dragonenchantress at awol.com. Email is right below in the description box below this video. Any donations are appreciated. My donation links are also below. So let's get into it. So what is going on with Scorpios right now with this specific energy group? We've got fast-moving energy, chaos, sudden turn of events. Ooh, a risk, reward, bold gesture, choosing love over fear. So it looks like someone here might be having a, a change of heart that was kind of unexpected. This is because they're nostalgic for you. They're missing you, especially with the Mercury retrograde energy going on. That makes sense. I feel like they might be missing, um, for some of you, you guys like went somewhere together. They could have a motorcycle as well. But for a lot of you, I feel like maybe they miss some place that you like went together or like you guys talked about going on a vacation together or some kind of trip here and they're missing that. They're thinking about that. We have mental instability. X the past. New love faded encounter. Ooh. Loyalty, stability, vows, sex, seduction, codependency, addiction. So I'm kind of getting the energy of two different people here. And it feels like the ex is un the ex is missing you, but the ex is also unstable. It feels like they're missing um, this, like they want this adventure, this honeymoon energy with you. It feels like you also have a new love coming in that's more loyal and more stable than the ex is, though. And maybe you've already met this person. But it feels like the ex is just going to want to drag you back in. Like, they're going to want to seduce you. They want, they want you back in that pattern with them that, you know, used to be codependent on them, used to be addicted to them. And they want that energy back. Yeah, there for some, there's old soul contracts here with the ex that need to be cleared up. Maybe you need to do a cord cutting ritual as well. Because it could be, it seems like a past life pattern with this ex that you're repeating here. It's like the same old, you know, this could be one of those exes where it's like you guys get back together and you break up. Three, four months later, you're back together again. You know, you go a year without talking and they show up out of the blue. It's just like, it's like this karma that just keeps repeating. And I feel like this cycle probably needs to end with this ex. Love offer, commitment, stagnation, complacency. Yeah, I feel like they are going to give you some kind of love offer, but I feel like you're going to be kind of stagnant. Like you're not going to take it right away because you know that there's the, the red flags there. You know that it's toxic. And I think you know intuitively that they're just trying to drag you back into old toxic patterns with them. So I think there are, you know, what I'm getting really from this reading, the main thing here so far, we'll see what else the cards have to say. But so far, this card is coming through strongly, the past life connection, soulmate, soul contract card. It really feels like someone that you have that like you had this deep connection with them but I feel like it was toxic I feel like I'm getting something about like your past lives like I feel like you guys have this like you guys have been together in your past lives I feel like I feel like it was supposed to wrap up in your last life with each other but it just didn't for some reason like, you guys didn't have that closure with each other. I feel like you guys had, like, a pretty chaotic relationship in your past lives as well. And I feel like they lost you or you lost them in a really, um, I don't want to say, like, a violent way. But I just feel like, I just, I'm not getting a sense that this was peaceful at all. I'm getting that the whole thing was chaotic. I think there was a lot of drama. I think that you guys were supposed to have your closure in your past life and for whatever reason you guys just kind of left that door open it's like it ended in a really chaotic way but you still refuse to let each other go and i feel like that cycle kind of repeated in this lifetime where it's like the you know this karmic cycle is up with this person but i feel like you guys are repeating this pattern with each other I just feel like there's like some soul contractor. There's like a red core that just needs to be cleared. I don't, ooh, I'm getting something weird here. Let me see. Because I was just thinking about it. I'm like, wait a minute. 
if that was a soulmate, you guys should still have some connection to each other. I mean, I, you know, in my opinion, people from your soul group, like, they don't just go away. You know what I mean? Like, you might not have a, a serious, you know, 10, 20 year relationship with them in every lifetime, but they, they should, there should be some kind of positive connection there. But I was really getting with this person that, you know, you guys were meant to clear things up and you weren't even meant to see them this lifetime. And that just kind of surprised me because I'm like, okay, this, if this is like a deep past life soulmate connection, you would think that you guys would be in each other's lives in some way. Why is it that it was meant to be cleared up for good? Like you guys weren't even supposed to meet this lifetime. It's really weird. Is this someone pretending to be a soulmate? Okay, you have like a really dark, toxic person pretending to be your... This is a weird story, I know. And this is not going to resonate for everybody. This is just for some specific people. I don't know. This just needed to come out. But I'll get into the rest of it in a minute. But what I'm really getting here is that this is, okay, oh God, what is it? It's like not, it's not like a demon. Like, I don't know. It's like I sense like a really, because I primarily channel. And so I get like a negative energy from this person, but like, I don't think it's necessarily demonic, but it does kind of have like this lower realm vibe to it. Um, I almost feel like this person is like, God, this is such a weird fucking story. <laughs> I'm sorry, just bear with me, guys, okay? Is this someone you're enemies with? Okay, so this isn't a soulmate. This is someone that you do have a past life history with, but, like, it was never meant to be romantic. I feel like they deceived you into thinking it was romantic. I don't know if that makes any sense. But it almost feels like... Because I get like an anger. I get like an anger and frustration when I channel them. And I feel, I don't know what, I don't know why I'm seeing them with a beard in their past life, but I feel like they had a beard in their past life if this is a male. But there's, there's a few different people here in this energy group at least. So, you know, different story, different variations of the story. But the, the, the gist of it is that I feel like this person... I feel like this person hated you for whatever reason. I feel like maybe you like betrayed them. Maybe your soulmate is like their brother or sister and they were jealous of them. I feel like there is some kind of, it's like they have like this vendetta against you and it feels like it's carried on from lifetime to lifetime and they might not even be conscious of it. Like they just feel this really, like, do you guys feel that from them? It's like this anger and this like, like, they're attached to you, but, like, I don't know if it's, like, like, it feels romantic, but it, it also feels, like, almost violent and chaotic. Does that make sense? Um, I'm sorry. Sometimes when I channel things, really weird shit come, like, just, I, sometimes I channel past lives and just weird things that I don't expect to channel. And then I'm, like, I have to take a minute to, to sort through what I'm, what I'm picking up here. But yeah, like the soulmate thing just, just threw me off for a second because I'm like, wait a minute. No, if this was a soulmate, why would you be clearing this up for good? Like, why would you never see them again in this life or any life after? And I'm like, wait a minute. that No, that wouldn't happen. If they were from your soul group, you guys would be, <clears throat> you guys would, you know, still see each other in this lifetime, even just as friends and probably in the next life as well. You know, you, you don't lose those connections just like that. But God, it feels like someone who is like obsessed with you or like jealous or it feels like you like betrayed them or they feel like you cheated on them in a past life or like they feel like, like I feel like in like your past life, like you were like with their brother or their sister or you were with, like you chose someone or something else over them and they were furious. I see, I don't know why I see a wagon. It's so weird. Like sometimes when I get these visuals, it's like I just see this like, this angry man who has, he has a beard and it's like, he has like barrels of alcohol or something. And he's just like hitting a wagon. Like he's like, this is like old, old times. This is like, this isn't even like the 1900s. This is like, this almost feels like, like old Ireland or like possibly even like the Victorian area era. Cause I see like these like cobblestone streets. Like this is, and like, he's kind of like dressed in like these sort of rags um, I'm kind of like grungy looking, kind of like dirty, but I just feel like, 
he just feels like you wronged him. And I'm sure there's different stories here. Like for some of you, you probably actually like robbed this man in your past life. Like it just, I get like this energy of him. Like I gave, you know, like he gave you everything. He or she gave you everything and they lost everything. So this could be financial. Um, I feel like for some, I feel like you chose someone else I feel like you chose someone that was like like I feel like this man had like a low status in society and I feel like you chose someone of higher status like you chose like a prince or a king or a queen or someone that just had a lot of wealth like a lord um maybe you were supposed to rip someone off and instead of ripping them off, you fell in love with them. Like maybe there's, it's almost like, I don't know. It's, it's a weird energy. I'm sorry if I'm explaining it weird, but it's almost like this man feels like he, in, like in your past lives, it's like he, he or she invested in you somehow and lost everything. So like, yeah, it does feel like you like betrayed them and like cheated or you chose someone else. But it also feels like there was finances tied to that, which I'm trying to figure out. Like maybe you guys were hustling someone together and you fell in love with the person that you were supposed to hustle and you just, just up and abandon, um, this angry little man that you were with for your true love. Like you expected, like you were trying to hustle. Okay. So you, you were like a couple, um, maybe you were kind of toxic too in your past life, to be honest. And, you know, I feel like maybe like you were trying to hustle someone that had quite a bit of money. And I feel like you ended up falling in love with this, falling in love with this person and you abandon the person, the, um, the man that, you know, you, you and this man were like hustling this other person. I feel like you abandoned him for this, this person that you were supposed to just get money from him and then come back to the original person, but you didn't. I think you fell in love with him and abandoned him. Um, for others, I feel like this is like, you chose like a brother or sister or someone over them. I just get like, I don't know. There's different stories here. You know what I mean? Like there's a couple different specific stories I'm picking up, but like for this general energy group, like, yeah, there's different variations of this story, but the gist of it is they feel deeply betrayed by whatever happened in your past lives. They feel like you screwed them over bad. And I really feel like, God, this might have been like the most recent life or like there might have been one life after that as well where they try to trick you into believing that you're soulmates. This isn't a soulmate. This is someone who hates you and wants you to think that you're soulmates. And they don't get me wrong. Like they have feelings for you, but it's more like an obsession. Does that make sense? Like, I feel like maybe this was like a karmic partner for you. Like it was like a very toxic relationship in your past lives. And I really feel like that whole thing was supposed to just wrap up. But I just feel like this person is like, like their soul is like toxic. Their soul feels like they, there was an injustice there that needs to be corrected. Does that make sense? So I think in this lifetime, this person has tried to like almost gaslight you into believing that you two are soulmates. And like, I'm sure that they're not conscious of it. You know what I mean? Like they're probably not conscious of it unless they're incredibly psychic. But I mean, most of them are probably not conscious of it. They're probably not sitting there like, oh, you did this in my past life. I'm going to get you. It's more like they just have this drive, you know, this like internal drive that's coming from their spirit that they don't even know why that's happening. But, um, but yeah, you needed this warning because this, this isn't, this isn't a soulmate. This is not a soulmate. This is a karmic partner that was not supposed to be in your life, even this lifetime, but it just feels like they're, they want revenge on you for whatever happened. They feel like there was an injustice. I feel like you might've even outed them to somebody. Like maybe you told a person like, oh, we were going to rip you off, but I fell in love with you. And then like, maybe this person like was like sentenced to death after that. Like I feel like, I feel like your person did not find their true love in that lifetime and they don't want you to find your true love in this lifetime because of that. I know it's crazy. I know. It's, shit gets weird. I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. But don't give in to the fear. It's okay. You can cut this person out. But I think it is something that you need to be aware of. 
And again, don't try to make this, like, like I always tell people, don't try to make this fit if it doesn't fit. If this is your story, I think you're going to feel this intuitively. This should be resonating with you to a T. If it's not resonating, then it's not your story. You know what I mean? Like it, you're either in this energy group or you're not. I'm not, I'm not sure what to say, but, um, but yeah, it feels like they want to come in, but you're going to be stagnant because you're going to be like, oh, there's something, something off about this. There's some red flags there. And you probably sense this too. Like you probably can kind of sense this energy where it's like, like you feel like they love you, but you also feel like they have like a bitterness or like an anger towards you, like deep down and you never understood why, you know what I mean? Almost like you trigger them easily and you're like, what the hell did I even do to you? Well, it's this, it's the past life thing. So I think that you need to be aware of this just because their energy is just very low vibrational and very toxic. Um, I think everybody needs peace and healing in this situation. Like this person, I mean, no, this person isn't really a great person, but at the same time, it feels like they've hung on to this bitterness for so long that they feel like they blocked, they feel like you blocked them from their true love, but it's really like they're blocking themselves at this point. Because it also feels like they're blocking themselves from meeting their own true love this lifetime because they're still bitter. It's like they're still living in the past. And, and again, they're probably not conscious of this. It's like their spirit just feels like this need for justice from you. And it, it's like they're, it's just like this cycle. It's this karmic cycle. But so, yeah, I just want you guys to know this is not a soulmate. This is someone that's basically been tricking you into thinking that they're a soulmate. Because, you know, they're a karmic partner and they can't let go of what happened between you guys in the past. Um, you need to be aware of this soul contract and end it. You know, pray to whoever you pray to, be it angels, gods and goddesses, fae, you know, what, whatever beings you work with. I would, I would, you know, look into this soul contract. Because, again, there's different ones for different people. It's the same energy groups, but there's, there's going to be different variations of this soul contract. But I just feel like whatever was meant to be like learned and released in that lifetime, it's like this person just, they're not letting it go. Like shit just went down. It, 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 it was a weird, it was not a good lifetime for that person at all. But, um, but yeah, this soul contract needs to be addressed. It needs to be cut. I feel like the cords need to be cut too. Because I feel like there's, you know... You have these red cords that connect you to anyone that you've been, that you've, you know, been close to, that you've truly loved. And, you know, past life connection like that, yeah, you have those cords, even though it's just a karmic partner. You still have those cords. And I just feel like, you know, those cords have reattached this lifetime. And they need to be cut because you can be over this person and this person can still be in your energy field and still, you know, draining your energy and tapping into your energy through those red cords. And you need to be aware of that, that, you know, you can say, oh, I'm over them all day long. And yeah, you probably are over them consciously. It doesn't mean that their spirit isn't still, you know, plaguing you to some degree, but it's not something to be afraid of. It's just simply those cords need to be cut and you can do a cord cutting ritual. You can do a spell to do cord cutting. There's lots of different ways to do it. Black walnut is something that I recommend for cord cutting. Um, if you go back through my videos, it was like probably like six, seven months ago at least, but there is a cord cutting spell that I did on this channel. Maybe you guys can just look it up in YouTube. Maybe, maybe it'll come up and you know, you guys can do that along with me. It's, it's not, it's not too hard. Um, the thing with cord cutting is it only works if you really want it to work. Like if you're really on board with it and you have to also be done with the person, because if you, you know, unblock them and talk to them again, those cords will just reattach. You have to really be done. Like you need to write whatever letter you need to write for closure and send it to them or burn it, do whatever you want to do with it. But you have to be done for good when you do a cord cutting ritual. Otherwise it doesn't work. So, so yeah, cut and clear work, look into cut and clear spells. Um, because this energy needs to be, even though I'm sure you're probably over this person consciously, this energy is something you need to be aware of and it needs to be cut out so that you can, you know, move forward and manifest something better. Because it feels like you have new love coming in and you have someone that's going to be loyal and stable to you, stable with you. And this person wants to seduce you and drag you back. And it's not even, I mean, like, okay, like consciously, they're, they're going to, consciously this person, this ex is going to feel like they want to drag you back because they love you. Their spirit is trying to drag you back though because they don't want you with this person. This actually, oh, crazy and oddly enough, 
I feel like this new love that's either just come in or coming in is actually the person that you chose over them in the past life. So they're pissed about that. They have a lot of anger and resentment about that. For some, like I said, it's their brother or sister. <clears throat> Anything else about this? But yeah, like I recommend each of you individually just, you know, look into this, this, um, this soul contract. And that's not something that you need anyone else for. You know what I mean? Like, don't be scammed by, um, by people that tell you that you can't do your own witchcraft or you can't do your own spells or you have to, you know, don't go to someone that's going to rip you off. Don't go to someone that's going to say, oh, you have a curse on you, an ancient curse, and you got to pay me $500 to remove it. No, none of that. The, this isn't, it's dark, but it's not something to be afraid of. It's, it's just simply you need to become aware of the, whatever the soul contract is and the red cords that keep you tied to this ex. You need to be conscious of it. You need to be conscious of your past lives with this person and you need to end it. You need to, you know, do the cord cutting ritual. And again, that's something that you can do on your own if you just believe in your own power. I would cleanse your space first, you know, use herbs or whatever to cleanse your space um, use salt around the, um, if you do like a candle spell, use salt around it. So no other outside energy gets in, you know, there's precautions you got to take, but you, you know, you can do this. This is just something that needs to be put to an end so that you can have that freedom. Trail, jealousy, conflict, beauty, mystery, enchantment. Yeah. It's such a crazy energy because you might have been with this person and been like, this is like my person, my true love, my soulmate. And it's like their soul was deceiving you. You know? Honestly, though, and I know it's not like a happy, happy reading, but it's honestly a really beautiful reading if you think about it because you're being shown what to do. So that you can have a happy relationship with your actual person, with your true love. So that you can let go of this toxic person from your past. The tox, like the red flags, everything that you dealt with with this ex, it's still going to be there. They're not, they haven't changed. You know, they just want to block this from coming in. It's like their spirit feels that you've either just met someone or you're about to meet someone and they want to block that from happening for you. But again, again, don't give in to fear because I know I can like feel your energy. Like not all of you, but some of you are like, oh my God, I don't want them to like block, block my true love from coming in. No, they can't. They won't. But your spirit guides are letting you know this, not to scare you, but just to show you what to do, you know? Like, this person is just a karmic partner. They are they don't have a lot of power. But, you know, they have power if you're not aware. If you, if you're, you know what I mean? Like, if you're in the dark about this, if you have this person that has these red cords attached to you and you don't even know that they're still draining you and picking up on you, you're like, well, I moved on from this. But it's like, no, there's still something going on here. You know? And again, it's not a bad thing. You just, you just have to do the cut and clear ritual. You need to cut those cords. You need to figure out the soul contract and end that soul contract, you know? And do that. Use your intuition. This is like a chance for you. Like some of you always go to someone else for help with things. And it's like, this is a chance for you too, I think, to step into your power. You know, maybe some of you are interested in witchcraft, but you've never really tried it. Now, now is your time. Now your spirit guides are saying, hey, like this is something that needs to be done. You know, it's like, trust yourself, use your intuition. And I think when you figure out what this soul contract is, it's like, you can end that, you know, you can see that pattern. You can end the soul contract. Um, the soul contract needs to be ended. And then you also need to cut the red cords between you guys is what I'm feeling. But I really feel like this is like a chance for you guys to step into your power. Some of you, you know, it's like, you're going to feel a sense of freedom. I think it's like, you didn't even fully realize this was weighing you down. You know, because cause like I said, what's going on in the spirit realm and consciously, sometimes those are very different things. It's like, yeah, you might pick up on a little bit of what's going on in the spirit realm, but 
you know, you can feel consciously like you're over someone, but they can still be draining you through those red cords without you knowing it. So it's like now you know it and it's a really beautiful thing because now you have the power. You know what's going on. So you have that chance to to free yourself. Yeah, you have the chance to take the blindfold off and free yourself and cut these cords. Yeah, I feel like you've been like afraid, like you've overthought things in the past and you've been afraid of stepping into your power. I even want to say that some of you were, were witches yourselves in your past lives and you might have been killed um, like early on, like you might have been like burned at the stake or something, like you might have been hung something. Sorry, I don't want to get too violent here, but possibly drowned. Damn. Okay. Anyway, anyway, that's kind of dark for this reading. Let's, let's get past that. But, um, I feel like some of you have a, have a fear of stepping into your power because of what you went through in your past lives. I think you went through some kind of trauma, like maybe you got killed or something happened and your spirit guides are saying, you know what, stop being afraid, stop overthinking and overanalyzing. It's time to step into your power. And, you know, if you're unfamiliar with witchcraft, I'm not saying just jump in and do whatever, but it's like you can do a cord cutting ritual. You can get a candle. You know, if you guys need help, I will do it for, I'll, I'll give you advice for free. I won't, I don't do spell work for anyone for free, but I will give you advice for free. Like if you want to, if you want to email me and just say, hey, like I'm getting a candle, I'm going to do this cut and clear spell. Is there anything I need to know? Any tips you have? I'll totally give you some free tips, you know? But it's time to step into your power. It's time for you to be conscious of that, to take the blindfold off and cut the cords so you can have the, the love and the life that you're meant to have because this ex needs to, this ex's energy needs to go. Yeah, they want to control you. And I know, you know, go easy on yourself because I feel like some of you are going to be really shocked hearing this and you're going to be like, oh my God, like, how did I not know? How did I, you know, I thought that person was my true love. I thought, you know, it, go easy on yourself. It's really easy to get caught up in the, you know, the passion, the romance. It's really easy when someone's, especially when someone's trying to dominate you and you're longing for love. It's easy to get caught up in that, to be vulnerable. You know, they wanted to be dominant. They wanted you to be submissive to them. And I'm not saying they didn't feel anything for you at all. Like, I think that their conscious side does feel something for you. You know, there was there was some real feeling there. There was that, you know, that past life connection there. But I feel like they just really tried to trick you into thinking that you were a soulmate of theirs when you guys are just karmic partners. And the cycle, like I said, you guys weren't meant to meet this lifetime. This, it just, for whatever reason, the cycle didn't end the last life with like it was supposed to. And so it's repeating in this lifetime and it really needs to be ended now. This is something you need to do now to free yourself. So anyway, I hope this helped you guys. I know it was a little bit chaotic. I'm sorry for that. But um, yeah, if you guys would like a reading, just email me. My email is dragonenchantress at AOL.com. My email is right below in the description box below this video. And um, any donations are appreciated. Even just a dollar really adds up. So my donation links are also below in the in the description box. And please like, share, comment, and subscribe. Thank you guys.